uh, I'm not sure if you've been following this, uh, but the the situation in Bangladesh, uh, there's been uh, rioting in the streets, there's been economic collapse, and, well, perhaps just recently, uh, some positive signs of stability in that part of the world, but uh, not for all of its citizens, it would be fair to say. Joining us on the programme now from Barnabas Aid New Zealand, Stephanie Johnson. Stephanie, kia ora. Kia ora. Good morning, Andrew. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Is, is Bangladesh part of the world you've been to? No, it's, it's definitely on my list of places that I'd like to go to. Yeah. Um, uh, probably Pakistan would be the closest. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, ben, Bangladesh hopefully soon. Uh, now, um, <clears throat> certainly been hitting the headlines recently uh, and uh, the, well, for the economy and the response from, from the public to that writing on the streets. Can you give us a little bit of a background on some of the things that have led to <clears throat> recent unrest in Bangladesh? Yeah, um, it's... You know, it started with some students protesting just for equal equal rights and, um, you know, just in the job market and things like that. Um, you know, Bangladesh is in a very old country. It's, you know, created in 1971 after some some wars between Pakistan and they separated from Pakistan. So um, when I was, you know, looking into this uh, a little bit, when things started happening, I just realized that the, the lady who was running it, the sheik there, she was uh, one of the daughters of the guy who founded the country. Wow. So she's been running um, the country for quite some time now. And I think people just got fed up with some of the economic instability and um, wanted some change. Uh, unfortunately, it turned very violent. Mm -hmm. um, it started peacefully. And then, you know, just uh, we, we saw recently how the um, she fled uh, to India, has resigned her post, and now there's another man um, named Muhammad Yunus who is replacing her at the moment as an interim government. So yeah. interesting stuff going on there. Um, definitely, we want the best for for Bangladesh and the people there. You know, we actually I remember um, in our prayer focus a few months back when Bangladesh was having the election again, mm -hmm. um, we were actually praying for Sheikh Hasina because she had done a lot to protect the rights of Christians. Um, and so it's it's hard. It's a it's a tricky one for us because as much as we want good things for the people in um, Bangladesh, we also know that under her, you know, under her like leadership, she was able to actually um, restore about sixty five churches yeah. Uh, yeah. through the government and then protection of Christian rights. So I think with this, whoever comes in next, um, regardless of the interim government or not, we need to continue to pray for Christians because um, they're only one percent of the population. So a lot to think about with that. Um, it's a Muslim majority country. Yeah. Uh, there's some religious, a lot of religious freedom there, actually, which is really good. Mm -hmm. However, you look at the, a lot of the persecution that happens in the rural parts, and so there is there is some that we have been helping with there. And so it's a it's a time right now when I think as Christians we come alongside and, and we need we do, really need to pray for what's going on there because it will affect our Christian community quite a lot. You mentioned uh, Pakistan beforehand, and of course, <clears throat> you and I have, have spoken about religious persecution in Pakistan. How would you compare the two in terms of, of uh, safety and, and religious freedom, <laughs> Bangladesh versus is Pakistan? Is it similar or is it just Pakistan? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, a there's, difficult there's, comparison, I know. There's definitely more rights that um, Christians have in, in Bangladesh than they do in Pakistan. Like I okay. said, um, religious freedom was was one of the things that Bangladesh, you know, when it was formed, was was very um, vocal about in regards to protecting people's rights to worship however they choose. Now, regardless of its, its Muslim majority, there are some Hindus there as well as as Christians. And so, um, but we have seen an, uh, an increase in, in, like I said, the rural parts. So yeah. in regards to comparison, um, I would say Bangladesh is a little bit more rights um, for Christians there, but still you're looking at um, if, if the government changes mm. um, and it goes to somebody who doesn't care so much about those rights, there's, there's going to be some issues for our brothers and sisters there for sure. And, and certainly uh, this this closely after an election, a, a troubling um, uh, sign, I suppose. I'm not sure if I got the right end of the stick on this one, but I, I thought that there was uh, particularly public concern about a quota system for yeah. uh, for areas of public office, and this perhaps a, a hangover from uh, from a class based structure or an ethnic based structure that a certain yeah, percentage okay. of the population had to have all the top jobs in government. Uh, the new government was looking at bringing that back in again. Is, have I got the right end of the stick? Yeah, on that no, that's that's right. It was about I think thirty percent was um, meant to go to the family of uh, 
uh, Sheikh Hasina. And so yeah. that's where the uprise definitely began. Um, and so, yeah, you got the right end of the stick there for sure. So it, like I said, it, it got um, in the beginning, it was just, hey, we, we need this to change. This isn't right. We need equal rights. We need to have government jobs, well-paying jobs as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely something that that should have been brought to brought to question. But then I think it just got out of hand um, after the government cracked down so much. There was a lot of people who were killed because yeah. of the government pushing back. And so, yeah, just it, it spiraled into something that unfortunately is now um, seeing lots of deaths that have happened in that area mm. because mm. of the protest. Yeah. And, and well, I suppose we wait and see whether or not the uh, the change of government brings more stability and the impact on on Christian communities in particular. Is it also, I mean, this is a generalization, is it also fair to say that a lot of the the civil unrest is happening uh, in um, urban centers of population, whereas uh, yeah. some of the some of the persecution of Christians is, is more of a rural problem? That is that generalization vaguely accurate? No, that's really accurate. Um, most, I would say 95% of the um, of the Christian persecution is happening within those rural areas. Um, you look at places like the Santel people group who um, they're being targeted and have been targeted for quite some time now. And it's a lot of land grabbing that happens with those, those particular Christians. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the main uprise of the riots and things like that happened in um, uh, an urban area. Um, I think I can't, I'm terrible at pronouncing names, but um I believe it's um, Dhaka. Yep. I think that's how you say it. I, I think can't. so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's um, that's where everything has been kind of the the epicenter of the riots. But when we're talking about Christians, there's also a small population of Rohingya um, Christians who we heard about on the news with the Rohingya Muslims yeah. who had fled Myanmar um, because of the military um, there that was really persecuting them. And then. We didn't hear much about the Rohingya, but there's still quite a lot of Rohingya Muslims or Rohingya Christians, yeah. refugees as well, who, who again, face quite a lot of persecution being another minority. But the the area, you know, we've got a really good video that we've put onto Barnabas Plus, which is a, live, a streaming service that we, we um, have with some really fantastic videos. Yeah. And there's specifically one in there about the Santel Christians. Um, and that one's a great video to watch to kind of understand more the land grabbing of what's happening there. Yeah. But then there's also a short video about Bangladesh, which talks about Christians being persecuted well. And you can find that on the Barnabas Plus dot uh, TV website. Mm -hmm. um, definitely something that, that people should have a look at because we put a lot of information on there about how Christians are are, are persecuted and um, these really short snippets that you can easily show at your church yep. or just areas of concern that you might have for Christians um, in these countries too. So it's definitely something to check out as well. Really appreciate that actually. And uh, was, you know, thank you for, for sending the link. Barnabasplus.tv, is that the place to go? I'm not just, of course, for Bangladesh, but yeah. for other parts of the world as well. Yeah, we've got, um, I think there's like 10, 10 videos on there, one minute clips of different countries and how Christians struggle in those countries. Um, and then there's also some other five to seven minute videos that really focus in on, there's a, uh, like I said, the story about the Santel Christians in Bangladesh um, and a lot of other, uh, there's some stuff on there about Iran. There's a testimony from an Afghan refugee who's currently um, living in a different country of safety now. So there's some really good things on there to have a look at. That is BarnabasPlus.tv or, of course, uh, BarnabasAid.org uh, for more information, and it will encourage people to to stay informed on what is happening in different parts of the world, especially places where it is uh, difficult or dangerous to uh, to call yourself a Christian. Uh, BarnabasAid.org, the place to go. Stephanie, thank you for what you do. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview it's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.